Malcolm. Malcolm behaved as if he thought his every waking moment fraught. It seemed like it had become a habit, and he was caught in the headlights like a wabbit. It's not as if someone had willfully tricked him, but somehow he'd learned to think, I'm a victim. It's a useful posture, there's none who would doubt it. But as one of the cleverer people, he knew not to shout it. He read up loads about his heroes, how they were made to feel like zeros, how it provided the spur to stop their rapping and give all around them a verbal zipping. My hoe, my bitch, that guy's a faggot. Signed to a label, you can make a packet. No need to get into the justification. Easier blame is on the state of the nation. Malcolm thought, hmm, I'll give that a try. I'll pick up a story. Now I will be dry, be all about hard times I've had in the hood. But his dad, when I said, as a boy, he was good, and it's quiet around here in Collier's Wood. I heard there's a problem with some young chaps who've been looting, but that's confined to an area mostly round. Titting! So back to the drawing board went Malcolm at speed, thinking street smarts today is an absolute need. I've got to establish my street-wise credentials. But right at the mow, I better shop for essentials. It was just as he got to the soaps and detergents that the solution hit him. With the full weight of virgins, I better get going, is what he said. And my beauteous plan will fly right from my head. This time, making sure his dad didn't hear, he told it all over and was soon into gear. If I'm a victim, I better act I'm deserving of liberal sympathies, both daft and unswerving. I'm sure the kids will invest in ways that are various, so long as Daddy and Mummy think the thrill is vicarious. So Malcolm made out his troubles all stemmed from a ruinous mother whom he roundly condemned. According to him and his rap, she was the essence of evil and deserving of love as country's bow weevil. Though she hadn't been perfect, but tell me who is. Running a dress shop can be a really tough biz. And with bills that kept mounting, it had to go under. And the stress that it caused nearly tore her asunder. This cut no ice with Malcolm, however. When asked to forgive, he said, never. But for bringing ruin on his head, he saw an oppo for cred. And ear yelled, I'm a fellow who's ever so clever. The kids lapped this stuff up, couldn't wait to download the latest from Malcolm as he hit the road. And proving himself to be a very swift learner, he brought his eyes into the back as a nice little earner. It was in Newcastle upon time, the third month of the tour, that he found all the faking pretty hard to endure. He'd had it with making tills go ring a ding ding and listening to the talk of the need for more bling. He'd give an aspirin a headache, was all that he said. And with that and the quick nod, he headed off for his bed. All anyone heard after that was a shriek. When they broke down the door, they had good reason to freak. I know this time my rhyme will not cause you to smile, but all that they found was a smouldering pile. What they decided was his mother's ghost had had it with Malcolm, so it turned him to toast. The moral, of course, is better watch who you're dissing, or you'll end up like Malcolm, whom nobody's missing.